Hello and welcome to Cupcake Addiction's Surprise Inside Rainbow Polka Dot Cake Tutorial where today I'm going to be showing you two awesome techniques, one being how to bake rainbow polka dots inside your cake so that when you cut it you get this awesome rainbow spotty surprise and the other being how to make a sprinkled cake tier. If you think this is a cool idea I would love it if you gave it a thumbs up and gave it a share on your social media. The things that you'll need for today's tutorial, I've got a fair amount of either baking or wax paper to line our tray. I've got a couple of different vanilla cakes, anything vanilla, anything white cake will be fine. And I all up used three of these cake mixes for this six inch cake. You'll also need a six inch cake tin. I've got some nonstick cooking spray, a silicone cake pot mold. I've got my colors. I've opted for the AmeriColor electric color range today just because they're so bright and vibrant. I've got sprinkles, so I'm using what we call hundreds and thousands, and I have a lot of sprinkles. I've got some bowls and some spoons, an offset spatula, a bread knife. I've got some of our perfectly pipeable buttercream frosting just in white, and I will link to that recipe in the description box below. I've got a tray. I've got two six inch cake boards, and I'm presenting my cake today on a 10 inch cake board, which I've just got sitting on a cake decorating turntable just for ease of decorating. So let's get started. The first thing you want to do is you want to make up just one of your vanilla mixes as per your manufacturer's instructions. So for me, this is really easy. It's just a bit of milk, some eggs, and some butter all going into my mixer and mixing it up as per the box instructions. As I said, you can make your favorite recipe here rather than a packet mix, but you just wanna make one little mix to begin with and you don't wanna make them all at once because we're gonna be making them at different times and baking them at different times. Take your vanilla cake mix and separate it evenly into those six bowls and then take your six colors of the rainbow, whatever colors you like here, and put a generous amount into each bowl. Stir it through and make sure you've stirred that color through really, really well and you can see how gorgeous and vibrant these AmeriColor colors come up. Now you wanna take your silicone cake pot mold and give it a really generous spray with that cooking spray. You wanna make sure that you give it a really good spray so that your cake balls come out really nicely. You wanna fill those cake balls and you wanna fill them all the way up to the line or even just a little bit over the line because you don't really wanna underfill them here. Take the lid, stick it on and press it down really firmly, not just on the sides but all through the middle. I actually found I didn't press mine down quite enough. So you can see where mine have come out of the oven. They've kind of spilled out a little bit. If this happens to you, it's not a problem. Just take a serrated edge knife, trim off the edges and you've still got your perfect little cake balls. You can also use a cake pop maker for this. I only baked mine for about eight minutes. They're only small and they don't need too long in the oven. Now that your bowls are all baked, you can make up another batch of your vanilla cake mix. It's best if you make this just before you're about to use it. So you should have your cake bowls, your made vanilla cake mix and your wax paper. So for my six inch tin, I've just cut a piece of wax paper for the base that perfectly fits inside. And then I'm taking a longish piece and folding it in half before wrapping it around my hands to make like a double strength collar that goes up about an inch or so higher than the side of my cake tin. Take your cake balls now and you wanna put, I put five or six in mine, but really you could do seven or eight. You can do these in any colors. You could do them in sporting team colors. I found that I would have liked just a few more polka dots in my finished product. So if I was to do this again, I think I'd put eight in each layer. Gently spoon over your vanilla cake mix so it just covers the balls. And then I got a smaller spoon and just made sure that none of my cake balls were touching the outside edge of that wax paper. I'm gonna pop those off into the oven and they took about half an hour to 40 minutes to bake. You need to do this three times so that you've got three separate layers. So although this is only a six inch cake, it's a really tall extended height six inch cake. So it is gonna feed a lot more people. When all of your cakes have baked and completely cooled, the thing that you need to remember here is you want them all to be an even height. So I start by cutting the bottoms off. Any sort of brown bottoms or crunchy bottoms, I like to just make sure that all the bottoms are nice and trimmed away. And then I'm gonna line them all up and I'm gonna cut almost across all three at once to make sure that I'm getting pretty much the same height. You can see those polka dots inside there. When I first saw the concept for these, I thought surely those balls baked in the center would come out dry being twice baked, but they didn't. They were still perfectly moist. So I'm thinking the vanilla cake on the outside actually protected them from getting baked any further once they're in the oven. I've taken the time just to trim them all really nicely and then I'm gonna stack them and just stick one of my six inch cake boards on top to make sure that all the cakes are within the boundaries of that six inch cake board. Now you wanna take a little bit of your buttercream frosting and put it on your base cake board. So one of your six inch cake boards and then stick down one of your tiers. You can see there it's all well within the confines of the board. If there's any overhang, you just wanna trim it off the sides of the cake so that you've got, I guess, a couple of millimeters in between the edges of the cake and the edges of the board. Use your offset spatula to apply a generous amount of that 
that vanilla buttercream and make sure where you can that it actually hangs out over the edges of each of those tiers so that when you've got all three stacked on top of each other you can use that spatula just to kind of make like a little bit of a crumb coat on the sides and you don't have any gaps where those little tiers have lined up. Give your top a nice coating of that buttercream and then all around the edges and you want to try and make these edges relatively straight so you want them to be as smooth as you can once again keeping within the confines of that six inch board then when it comes to the top you'll see I'm just using the back of my spatula just to kind of scrape in towards the cake to give me some really nice sharp edges with that buttercream frosting. Pop your cake in the freezer for a good 20 minutes so that first coat gets nice and firm and then you want to take your sprinkles and this is where it gets really messy pour a really generous amount of them into your tray. Once you've got your sprinkles ready you're going to apply a second coat of the frosting. That stuff underneath is going to be nice and firm so it's going to help us hold our shape but it's not going to be sticky enough now for those sprinkles to stick to. I put the second a six inch cake board on top of my cake and this is going to help me keep it a nice even height and a nice even width all the way around and then fill the center with more buttercream frosting. Using your bread knife because it's nice and long and flat you just want to run that along. It should rest up against those two six inch boards and give you a pretty well perfect nice straight edge to your cake. Use your spatula now just to lever that cake up off your baseboard and then you'll be able to pick it up using those two six inch boards. You'll actually be able to carry it quite easily and then you're just going to roll it kind of like a drum in your sprinkles. You will need to shake those sprinkles and just level them out so that they stay in the center because as you pick them up onto the sides of the cake they're going to want to leave little holes in the center of your sprinkle well. You can see here why we need so many. Once you've got it completely covered just pat them all on so they're really nice and firmly stuck to that frosting and they're not all going to fall off. A little bit more frosting down on that little baseboard and then I'm just going to sit the cake on top. You'll have a couple of minutes to maneuver it around before that buttercream starts to set. Once again taking your spatula now and you just want to kind of lever underneath that top board. It doesn't matter if a little bit of your frosting comes off here because you're going to neaten that up anyway and it needs a fresh coat. So just use your spatula, scoop on a bit more of that frosting and try to keep it within the confines of those sides so you're not putting any frosting over the sprinkles that you've already laid on the sides of your cake. To coat that top and this is where it gets kind of messy and you will get sprinkles everywhere. I just took little handfuls of the sprinkles, sprinkled them on top and kind of spread them out but I found it's best if you use one of your hands to kind of support the side edge of your cake so those sprinkles aren't falling off too much. Once you've got that top completely coated in sprinkles make sure that you're wiping any of the excess ones off and just sort of evening it up a little bit but this is where you can now use your hands just to retain those nice clean sharp edges of your tall straight cake. Clean up your cake board just using a dry towel and I finished mine off with just a little bit of ribbon. You can do this in any color that you like but it just adds a little bit of something to the cake and makes it really beautiful. I love these sprinkle cakes. I think they're gorgeous on their own but combined with that rainbow polka dot effect this is truly a wow factor cake. I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. As I said if you love it make sure that you give it a share for me. Give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below if there's any other cool things you want to see either baked outside or inside cakes. As always, thanks very much for tuning in to My Cupcake Addiction.